the book of Luke, and we'll look at chapter 16. All right, before I read the article, I want to mention this. If you turn to over Luke chapter 16, I want to first of all mention this, is that we already heard about the news uh, that's being widespread per concerning about Kobe Bryant that he passed away. Now, if he passed away, I just want to mention this, is that we are in no way condoning or rejoicing or trying to magnify uh, and worsen the situation for people grieving yeah. over his death. Yeah. And we don't want to be that kind of church that causes problems, okay? So concerning about the death of Kobe Bryant, I want to say this is that if he's dead and then all these people, when they're grieving over his sad situation, I just want to say this is that we are sad and we are in grief as well. Why? Because it is a sad situation when someone dies. So for the people who are affected by it and the family members affected by it, I just want to say this. I just want to say that this preacher and maybe some of the people here after this video's teaching is over is we're going to pray about these people. And we're going to pray that the Lord can work on their hearts and perhaps give them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's ultimately what we want anyway, is everyone to go to heaven after they die and receive the good news that Jesus died for your sins. So I just want to make that disclaimer. Now, I also want to explain over here that concerning the sadness and grief, there are so many people, understandably, who are trying to investigate this matter. So this preacher over here, concerning a lot of people who are in grief and in sadness, who want to know what's going on, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give all the information out there. Uh, this preacher, though, however, is not going to believe all the information that he gives, and perhaps he might not even believe any of the information he's going to give to you. Okay. I'm going to just simply give out the information out there, and then the people can see what the news sources or what other people from all sides have to say concerning about his death. Now, first, let's start off a standard way, okay, a standard way. We're going to go by a popular news source, mainstream news source. We're going to start that as the standard point, okay? And then we're going to look at different points of view over here. All right, so how he died, it mentioned over here that this is by USA Today. So this is by USA Today. And the title of the article over here is that Kobe Bryant's helicopter spotted minutes before deadly crash. That's the title of the article. All right, let's, say, let's read over here. We know that this was a high-energy impact crash. She said, this is a pretty steep descent at high speed, so it wouldn't be a normal landing speed. She also mentions, there's also some other quotes over here. Brian's helicopter also lacked black boxes required in airplanes that record data and pilot audio. Investigators do have radar tracking and recordings of communications with air traffic controllers. So basically, what's kind of interesting here is that this helicopter, it lacked the communication audio that it needed for its safety measures. Those sources reveal how pilot Ara Zobayan, 50 years of age, lifted off from John Wayne Airport in Orange County, bound for Ventura County above Los Angeles. Why? Because Bryant was going to coach his daughter, Gianna, age 13, in a basketball game at his academy in Thousand Oaks. So, man, if that really happened, man, you can imagine how uh, sad that event is. Yeah. Now, this is what's interesting that happened. Radar data shows that helicopter rose to 2,300 feet. Quote, when the controllers asked the pilot what he planned to do, once he made that sudden, uh, sudden swerve, all of a sudden, th remember, the descent was really, really fast. What, what did the pilot reply? When controllers asked the pilot what he planned to do, there was no reply, Hamandi said. A short time later, the first 911 call came in for a possible helicopter crash and brush fire. How about that? So this is the standard uh, news that's going around mainstream. Now... I'm going to read some interesting articles here about 
what Christian pastors and other news reporters mention. So that's the standard story. The helicopter, all right, here goes my great work of art. Amen. Amen. That looks, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it, right over there? <laughs> so there was a helicopter. All right, all right. Yeah, that's good, right? Right over here, you know? But all of a sudden, it makes the sudden drop all of a sudden, like really, really fast, like an abnormal speed. And then it crashes. It lacked a black box for communication. And also, it was an abnormal speed drop. So it was not the normal type. Also, when communications tried to reach that pilot, the pilot did not reply back. So that's standard news of what's going on. Now, Christian pastors, you know what they said about Kobe Bryant's death? So a lot of people, they're really giving a lot of praise because Kobe Bryant is like pretty much an idol figure yeah. to the world, so to speak. So he, what do we mean by idol? So if you look at a dictionary word for idol, so to speak, or even the people's use of the term idol, that's what they refer to celebrities. Why, why is that? Because he is such an idol. He is such a celebrity. And notice how the world gives a lot of adulation and praise to him concerning this one. All right. U.S. President Donald Trump, uh, quote, reacted via his Twitter account, Kobe Bryant, despite being one of the truly great basketball players of all time, was just getting started in life. He loved his family so much and had such strong passion for the future. The loss of his beautiful daughter Gianna makes this moment even more devastating. Melania and I send our warmest condolences to Vanessa and the wonderful Brian family. May God be with you all. So that's Trump. Now here's Chad Veach from Zoe Church. He posted on Instagram, devastating. Prayers to the Brian family and all those affected by today's tragedy. LA will never be the same. I heard Bill Plashke talk this week about Kobe being the most important Laker ever. An, icon an iconic leader that meant so much to this city and the world unreal. Isn't that interesting? Iconic leader meant so much to this city. So this whole world's really looking up to this guy that even Christian pastors are. Bobby Houston of Hillsong Church, right? <laughs> Quote, so very sad, life is so precious, fleeting and unpredictable. I have no connection to this world or these families Yet with many others, I feel deep sympathy for all their families. May the peace that passeth understanding overshadow and grace them all. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. That was obviously a quotation from the NIV. Here's Franklin Graham. You know Billy Graham's son from Samaritan's Purse? Quoted. Yeah, your pastor's researching. All right? <laughs> he dug deep here. Quote, our deepest... Condolences and prayers for the families of NBA great Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and the other victims in this tragic helicopter crash in California today. Please remember them in your prayers. Now, he gave a gospel over here. Anytime there is tragedy like this, it is a reminder of the brevity of life and that none of us know when we are going to have to stand before God and give an account for our lives. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah, amen to that one. Amen to that one. So you'll notice right here how Christian leaders are also uh, commenting about the death of Kobe Bryant. Why? Because that's how much of an iconic idol figure he is. Bishop T.D. Jakes, quote, all right, quote, My heart is broken as Kobe Bryant is a national treasure to our country and a symbol of hope and fatherhood to our community. We are all rattled and reminded of our own mortality, humanity, and that of those we love, so sad for Vanessa Bryant and the families of those whose candlelight has disappeared on this side. So notice right here, all these big shot Christian leaders are giving their quotes, even Ray Comfort as well. So all these people 
are quoting about Kobe Bryant's death, taking advantage of it. Why? Because he's such a widespread, iconic figure. Now, what this pastor is going to do is like what he mentioned at the beginning. If that did happen, then obviously our hearts go with them. And ultimately, we want those people to get saved. Right. And I want to give a gospel message at, at the end of this video as well. But as this pastor is going to give out what? All sorts of information, not just the Christian pastors. So I'm going to give the Christian pastors what they stated and their condolences. I give a mainstream news, uh, news media as well, and a lot of other people who mentioned as well. Now, this one was quoted. All of this was quoted by the Christianity Today news article. The title of the article is Kobe Bryant Death. Christian leaders pay tribute to NBA star, daughter Gianna, and crash victims. That's Monday, January 27, 2000. And 20. Okay, now here are some interesting things. This is from, I believe, NBC News in their video clip. Some other interesting points about this helicopter, which was pretty abnormal. The chopper, he dropped 350 feet, okay? Really, okay, this is compared to an airplane, right? This is not an airplane, this is a helicopter. Within six seconds, so this is like, okay, this is not a normal thing, it looks like, okay? Let me show you another one. When he dropped, I mean, it dropped like trying to avoid the clouds, and then went all of a sudden. Like trying to avoid the clouds, but then you go like this is pretty, pretty like, that's not normal, right? 176 mile per hour. Wow. All right, this is like, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty abnormal here. So that's why some people who are in grief over his death, a lot of them want to investigate what's going on as well. So here are some people who give these kind of opinions. Now again, I am not of these opinions again. I'm trying to give out all the information that I can Amen. find over there. So notice right here concerning about uh, this drop, what is pretty interesting is that some people they also see that when Kobe Bryant took his helicopter, it has a symbol over it here, which almost looks like a, a it, which is very symbol, uh, similar with the Tesla symbol, right? But this symbol is mostly known in Kobe Bryant's uh, brands as well as his helicopters. This is uh, his helicopter riding. Everybody agrees that's his normal thing that he does. He, use, he has his own private helicopter. But this is pretty similar with Tesla. But what is kind of turn your blood cold is that when you look at this symbol, this is associated with his Black Mamba thing. Now with this Black Mamba symbol, if you look at it more carefully like this, if you look at Wiccan sources, they say that this is supposed to represent some kind of birth, yeah. something sexual, as if you're entering a sexual organ, so to speak. See that? But not only that, the god who was famously known for sexual orifices was that Baphomet goat. Yeah. You notice that Baphomet goat? So the Baphomet goat, it seems to match up with his head shape, actually, which is kind of interesting. Not only that, when the Baphomet goat was doing, uh, if you look at that same Baphomet goat, he gives this kind of picture, I believe, or some kind of weird symbol with his fingers. Yeah. And what is pretty blood chilling is that Kobe Bryant did the same weird hand signal like Baphomet as well. This is not just a normal hand signal. This is something weird that normally people wouldn't do. Yeah, so I think it was like this, I believe. Yeah, but you can research that one. But Bryant was caught with the picture with that one too. So some people are thinking that there might be something dark going on here, especially this is associated with the snake, and that's public information that people know about. If you, type, if you look up Kobe Bryant logo, don't believe me, you can look it up. There's a lot of black mamba snakes in there. Now, who is known as the serpent? Satan. Satan. This is all Satanism, so to speak, over here. What's even more chilling <laughs> is that when he was introducing his brand, his product for success, all these elites and celebrities were there in the room. And then his famous symbol was showing over here. This is his famous symbol. Now, what is this one, actually? This is the famous what? Pyramid. That is known in 
the Illuminati in conspiracy theories. But what's even more chilling <laughs> is that Brian mentioned about being how to be successful. How, what happens when you hit the top of the pyramid, basically mentioned? How do you hit higher success over there? OK, here's something, some other information. So I don't know if you've heard of this term called predictive programming before. So predictive programming, this one, it's not the first, OK? You should look at a lot of things. How cartoon shows, like Simpsons, Family Guy, etc., when they do these jokes of these celebrity figures, it's very scary how this was years prior before the actual event happened for certain celebrities, actually. A lot of the celebrities, they know that there are things that are going on in the Hollywood system that they can't really say to the public. And usually when people make jokes, this is a matter of fact truth. When people make jokes, there's a half truth behind it. They do that for a reason. Yeah, it's not just ha ha, it's a laugh. No, why do they say that part of a joke specifically? It's for a reason actually. So what's scary is that there was this cartoon show about Kobe Bryant where he was in this helicopter and it crashed. And then uh, there's this group over here that asked him for the trophies. And Kobe Bryant said, what about the trophies? And then it, the helicopter just exploded like that. So you know what some people are saying? Some people are wondering if this could be some kind of sacrificial moment for the elite system, for Kobe Bryant to attain godhood, so to speak. Now, I don't know how much that is true, but I'll tell you one thing is that this, uh, that show was scary when you watched it on the cartoon. And not only that, a lot of this other stuff that Kobe Bryant was involved in, that is pretty scary. Yeah. You want me to tell you what's even more scary than that? <laughs> his famous 81-point game. You know his famous 81-point game that made history? Yeah. It was his 666 game in his NBA yeah. career. His famous workout where he, so he has a workout system where he can become successful. Notice all this relates to his success, his status. He has a workout that's literally called 666 workout. You know why? Because he has certain methods of doing his workout that's six this, six that, six this. Wow. Did you look at the number he wears on his back? 24. 24. Two plus four equals? Six. They say, I don't know if this is true, but they say that his height is six feet, six inches. I don't know if that's true or not. So you see right over here, when you look at this, this is like, okay, it's one thing to see all these things, but this is just too much, you know, when you put them all together. Like there might be something going on here, right? So you notice right here that this is a very chilling thing. So it could be that there was a sacrificial moment, especially when you look at this stuff. That's pretty strange. <laughs> it may be that there was a sacrificial moment going on. That's what some of the people are saying, where it just went down and then crashed. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the information is saying from other people online. Now, I'm going to tell you this, which is also interesting. Before Kobe Bryant died, you know where he went to? He was attending a Catholic church, oh. Catholic mass. Now remember, the Vatican is connected with a lot of interesting things with the Illuminati as well, right? But aside from that, Kobe Bryant, right before this incident happened, he went to a Catholic Mass. And the Catholic Mass is known as a what? Sacrifice system, where you eat Jesus as well, right? How about that? I don't know. I don't know. But when he was t partaking in the Catholic Mass... It's actually pretty sad over here as I read the story. The service was held by Father Anthony Vu, a Vietnamese parochial vicar at the church. Julie Ermes of Our Lady Queen of Angels Catholic Church confirmed to the Daily Mail, quote, he attended the 7 a.m. mass prior to going to the Orange County John Wayne Airport. I imagine he went straight to the airport because the mass was 7 to 8 a.m. I'm told generally 7 a.m. was his mass. He was very discreet. 
he would come in and stay at the back and his family too. And then he would usually leave a little earlier prior to the very end of the service. He was very much loved at the church and he was very devout, very dedicated to his faith. The title of the, yeah, it's sad, isn't it? Title of the article is by Christianity Today by Nate Flanagan. Article titled, Kobe Bryant and daughter Gianna attended Sunday church service just hours before tragic death. Now, look at this concerning about Kobe Bryant, what the Catholic Church said, uh, what the Catholic Church testimony said about him. So, I, yeah, isn't it sad? It's really sad. This is not something where we uh, try to magnify fear and try to magnify terror and try to magnify evil. This is something that's pretty sad, actually, and you won't know until you look at the full context of a lot of information out there, and you get a fuller picture of what's going on. So the Catholic Church, they mention about his Kobe Bryant's story, basically. So this is by CatholicWorldReport.com. CatholicWorldReport.com. So this is his background, how he became Catholic, okay? So remember that uh, case where he was accused of rape that time? So that was, it was at that point, it was at that specific point that he became more devout to the Catholic faith, actually. So it says right here, Brian said it was a priest who helped him to make some important personal realizations during the ordeal. Describing his fear of being sent to prison for a crime he believed he had not committed, Bryant told GQ that, quote, the one thing that really helped me during that process, I'm Catholic, I grew up Catholic, my kids are Catholic, was talking to a priest. It was actually kind of funny. He looks at me and says, did you do it? And I say, of course not. Then he asks, do you have a good lawyer? And I'm like, uh, yeah, he's phenomenal. So then he just said, let it go, move on. God's not going to give you anything you can't handle, and it's in his hands now. This is something you can't control, so let it go. And that was the turning point. Now, look how devoted he was. And what happened was a 2004 decision to place, what did he do? Deeper trust in God did not mean the basketball star's life was thereafter without difficulties or defined by virtue. In 2011, Vanessa Bryan filed for divorce from Kobe, citing irreconcilable differences, but Bryan said he decided not to give up on his marriage and two years later, what? His wife withdrew her divorce petition. I'm not going to say our marriage is perfect by any stretch of the imagination, Brian told GQ in 2015. We still fight just like every married couple. But you know, my reputation as an athlete is that I'm extremely determined and that I will work my blankety blank off. How could I do that in my professional life if I wasn't like that in my personal life when it affects my kids? It wouldn't make any sense. Brian and his wife have been reported to be regular parishioners at an Orange County, California parish. Now, here's the thing, is that, like I said with uh, the mainstream information, if uh, he was killed, I'm going to say the same thing with the conspiracy. If it's true that he had some satanic connections, you know what's a crying shame and what's really sad? Is that this person was so devouted to the Catholic religion and to maintaining a family while Bible believers, they just find an excuse to divorce. Bible believers, they're not faithful to attend church every Sunday. He's a hardcore Satanist. Okay, if he's a hardcore Satanist, he sure was very faithful mm -hmm. to that religion. Unlike your founder of your religion who died and bled for you. Isn't that sad? It's amazing that when people are grieving over the death of this idol figure, you notice how he was basically idolized by the world, right? So idolized, so widespread. That's why some uh, people, what they're worried about concerning if this was a sacrifice, it was so that he can attain godhood, so to speak. So if that's the case, then all the world looked up to him like a god, so to speak. In fact, USA Today by Zilgit, January 28th. The title of the article is, listen to the title of the article, Petition 
to change NBA logo to silhouette of Kobe Bryant has more than 2 million signatures. That much it was idolized. People looking up to him as some iconic idol, some God figure. So, what can a Bible believer say about all this kind of stuff? Luke chapter 16. The Bible says over here, it doesn't matter if you have all the riches in the world. Verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He had all that life could have. Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in what? Hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Look what he does, verse 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art what? Tormented. Tormented. People all look up to him like an icon, idol, or a god. And that will be Satan's greatest success is people look up to him and they want to follow his kind of example. Famous, idolized, money, rich, iconic figure in sports. That's what I want to be in life and not pay attention to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the end, like Abraham said to that rich man, remember the good things you received? And yeah, the Christian life, it's not so much as many good things. It's like evil things. But now, that rich man is tormented, whereas the saved saint is comforted. Mm -hmm. The most important thing in your life is, during this grief and tragedy, you don't look up to this kind of person and idolize that kind of lifestyle you live in and waste your whole years. Amen. You want to check your own life for you, the eternity of my soul. Who would have thought Kobe Bryant died, right? Just all of a sudden? Yeah. Just all of a sudden, you don't know when you're going to die. That's right, dude. That's right. And there's something here. If you really look up to Kobe Bryant, then let me say it this way. If this is true, okay? Kobe Bryant turned to something spiritual and his faith before he died. He even realized faith would be that important. If you really idolize him that much, Maybe you should stop criticizing Christianity and faith and start to consider seriously about that. Think about the eternity of your soul. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important thing ever in life. And I hope that you would get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, receive him for your salvation. What I want at the end of this video is to, is to say this. My prayer, and I, you know what? I don't care about all this kind of information online, if it's wrong or if it's right. You know why? Because this is, I'm thinking about my own soul and your own soul. Amen. And I don't care if I'm proven wrong in all of this and that Kobe Bryant got saved and went to heaven. That would be my, my wish anyway. Amen. I don't want anybody dying and burn in hell for all eternity. Amen. But I, what about you? Let me say a prayer for you and for all the people in grief over Kobe Bryant's death. Let's, let's bow in a word of prayer. God, my Father, I want to pray, Heavenly Father, that during this tragic situation, I don't know how much is true or false out there. What I've learned to do with information is to just take it with a grain of salt. All I can say is this way, if this is what happened. All I can say is this way. For the people who are in grief, will you please comfort their hearts, especially the loved ones who are involved with Kobe Bryant's tragedy. Would you do a miracle, Heavenly Father, by using that incident to warm their hearts to think about eternity, the suddenness of life and death. And that, look, basketball fame and career means nothing without thinking about the eternity of your soul. I can definitely say this. Brian, right now, will definitely agree to that right now. That all on, on this earth will not matter now. It's the eternity of the soul. Will somebody, will you please touch these people's hearts to somehow think about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved? Realize that because of my sin, I'm going to burn in hell, so I need to repent, believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can wash away my sins. May they call upon you for salvation in this way. 
Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I repent. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone. Thank you so much that there is peace and comfort I can turn to in my life and my future and that death does not have to be the end. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My heart goes out for you people.